Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to be doing Chapter 7, Lesson 1, which is about adding and subtracting polynomials. Please have your journals open to page 206. A monomial is a number or a variable, or if you want to take numbers and variables and multiply them together, then that would be a monomial. The degree of the monomial is the sum, so you're going to add together all of the exponents of the variables only. The degree of a monomial is different than what we'll see down here, which is the degree of the polynomial. Here I have four examples of monomials. So if I want to find the degree of the monomial, I need to look at the variables. If you look at 3x, there is no exponent on that variable which means that there's an invisible one here. So that means that the degree of this monomial is one. If I look at the next one, I have one half AB squared. Well, the B has two, the A has an invisible one. So that means we're gonna add one plus two and get three as the degree of the monomial. Negative 1.8 M to the fifth just has a degree of five, and just the plain old number six had as a degree of zero because we could say that it is the same as six x to the power of zero. So that means that its degree is zero. So if I took a whole bunch of monomials and put them together in a group by adding or subtracting them, then that would be a polynomial. So polynomial is the general term and a special type of polynomial would be a binomial and a trinomial. So a binomial, if you think about like a bicycle has two wheels, so it has two, right? So that would be two monomials that are added and subtracted together. So for example, we could have 2x plus 3. That would be a binomial. A trinomial, if you think of a tricycle, has three wheels. So that's three monomials that are added and subtracted together. So for example, x squared plus 3x plus 4 would be a trinomial because it has three of them that are added or subtracted. For the next three terms, we're going to look at an example. So I'm going to start with standard form. The standard form of a polynomial is when you have the exponents in decreasing order. So here I have x to the third, and then x squared, and then x to the power of one, and then this would be x to the power of zero here. Notice that they are in decreasing order as you read along it. So standard form, and you're gonna need to write all of your answers in standard form in my class. The degree of the polynomial is different than the degree of the monomial. So the degree of the polynomial is found from the very, very first term of the polynomial, and it's going to be the degree that you find here. So in this case, this is the degree of this polynomial. So the degree is three. And lastly, the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient is the term that's out in front of the first part of the polynomial. So if it's written in standard form, which this is, then this would be my leading coefficient. The term closed, and honestly, I'm not going to be using this a lot in this class, but I did want to introduce the concept to you. So the term closed means that it's if you have a set of numbers, that set of numbers will be closed if you think of an operation, and like adding or subtracting, multiplying or dividing. So if that operation is formed on any of the two numbers within the set, if the result is also in the set, then it is closed. If the result is not in the set, then it is not closed. I know that's kind of confusing, so the easiest way to do it is by looking at a couple of examples. Okay, so if my first example says that if I had positive numbers, so only positive numbers, I'm going to say they are closed under addition. So what that means is that if I take any two positive numbers, and if I'm going to add those together, my result will also be a positive number. 
And that's true, right? Any two positive numbers that we would add together like two and five, two plus five is still positive. So since it's also positive, then that set is closed under addition. So I can say that that statement is true. So let's look at one more example. Let's say I said that positive numbers are closed under subtraction. So that means I would take any two positive numbers, and if I subtract them, then my result is also a positive number. Well, I would say that that is false. Now, anytime you say something is false, you have to give a counterexample. So my counterexample is going to be 5 and 7, because if I took those two positive numbers and I subtracted them, I'm going to end up with a negative number, and that negative number is not positive. So that means that this statement is false. For these first example problems, we need to find the degree of the, of the monomial. So in number one, I can see that there's an invisible one here with the S, so that means this degree is one. For number five, I can see that there is an invisible one here. So I have a two and I have a one. I need to add those together, and so my answer is three. Let's take a look at number three. I notice that I don't have any variables at all this time, which means if I did put a variable there, I would need a variable with an exponent of zero. So that means that my degree is zero. I would like for you to do the rest of these problems on your own. For number two, I got one. Number four is three. Number six is six. Number seven is four and number eight is zero. If you made any mistakes, please pause the video and see if you can find them. If we take a look at exercises nine through 12, they want us to do many different things. They want us to first write it in standard form, then we need to identify the degree, and then the leading coefficient, okay? Then, of course, we have to classify it. So there's a lot of things going on here. So my suggestion is to make a grid. And that grid is going to help us organize our answers. So you'll notice that I put everything that we need over here. OK, so let's take a look at number 12. So what I'm going to do first in the first box here is I need to put it in standard form. So remember, standard form means that my exponents need to be in decreasing order. So I notice that f doesn't have an exponent, so I'm going to put a placeholder 1 there for me so that I make sure to put it in the right order. So I'm going to start with f to the power of 4, and then f to the power of 2, which I need a plus sign in between, and then minus 2f. Now, notice that the, the, the 2 is what's negative, so it stays with that. In this case, this was uh, f squared was positive, so I needed to make sure to put a plus sign there. Okay, now, that, now my degree. So my degree is, if I look at the very first term, I see that the degree is 4, so the answer for this is 4. Now I'm going to find my leading coefficient. My This is my first term. My leading coefficient isn't there, so I need to put a placeholder 1. And lastly, I need to classify it. So since there are three terms, that would be the trinomial. Okay, I'd like to see if you can go ahead and do numbers 9, 10, and 11 on your own. Okay, if you could just pause your video and check your answers to see if you got them correct. And if you did not get something correct, see if you can find your mistakes. Okay, on number 13 through 16, we need to find the sum, which means we're adding these together. So if you look at number 13, if we think about taking away these parentheses, we would need to multiply in an invisible one here. Now, whenever you multiply in an invisible one, the it doesn't really change anything, right? Because one times anything just stays the same. So this is just going to be written without the parentheses. The next step is to combine like terms. So I need to combine my x's together, and I need to combine my just plain numbers together. I want to make sure to write it in standard form, so that means I need to write the ones with the x's first. Negative 4 and 6 is positive 2. And then 9 minus 14 is negative 5. So my final answer will be 2x minus 5. 
if you wrote minus 5 plus 2x, I would actually mark that incorrect because it's not in standard form. So you need to always make sure to write it in standard form. On number 15, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to rewrite it without the parentheses by thinking about multiplying in the 1. Then I need to combine like terms. So I combine, I need to remember, uh, write it in standard form. So I'm looking at my x squareds first. We have a positive x squared and a negative x squared, so those actually just get canceled out. And now I'm going to look at my positive 3x and my positive 6x, so that would be 9x. And lastly, I'm going to look at my 5 and my minus 4, so that's going to be plus 1. So that's my answer for number 15. I would like for you to please do numbers 14 and 16 on your own. For number 14, I got 4a plus 3. And for number 16, making sure that I wrote it in standard form. So I started with my t to the power of 3, and then plus t, 3t squared, plus 7t minus 3. So please double check that you have that written in the correct order. And lastly, we need to find the difference. So when I multiply in my 1s, this time the first one is the same, but check out what happens here. So if we have, so the first one is just g minus 4, but then negative 1 times 3g is minus 3g, and then negative 1 times negative 6 turns into positive 6. So you have to double check that you have distributed that negative correctly. And then the rest of it remains the same, so I'm going to combine my terms. So we have g and negative 3g, which is negative 2g. And I have negative 4 and positive 6, which is positive 2. So that is my answer for number 17. Let's take a look at number 20. So I'm going to multiply in my 1. It doesn't change anything on my first parentheses, so I'm just going to rewrite it as is. In my second parentheses, I notice that I am going to need to flip the signs all the way through. So this becomes negative 5k to the power of 3, negative 5, 7k, and then plus 3k squared. A lot of students want to skip this step thinking that they can just do it in their head, and I find that a lot of students make mistakes. So please don't skip this step because it will help you not make a mistake. It doesn't take that long, and it's worth doing so that you don't make mistakes in the long run. So now I'm going to combine my like terms. I notice that I put my k to the power of 3 first because I need to write it in standard form. 6 minus 5 is 1, so I'm just going to write it as k to the third. Now we have, I need to do my squareds next. So we have k squared and 3k squared, so that will be 4k squared. And lastly, I need to put my other two. So negative 7k goes next, and then minus 4 goes last. And so that's my answer for number 20. I would like for you to please do number 18 and 19 on your own. For number 18, I got negative 12h minus 8, and number 19 is 2x squared plus x minus 3. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.